Even if you have $4 million in the bank, you can't buy another liver. These were the words that George Maharis said in an interview when he realized that he had an illness that could potentially put an end to his life. At the time, he was on top of his game in Hollywood, but now he had no other choice but to leave. Seems simple enough, but Hollywood wasn't done with him yet, and so they decided to fight and force him to stay even when he didn't want to. George was devastated. The producers at Route 66 were determined not to let him go. The battle line was drawn. How did it all pan out? Let's find out. Little beginnings. He was a natural-born singer, ready to take on the music industry. But all his dreams of being a musician came crashing down when he damaged his vocal cords. This rather unfortunate event would lead him to the very craft that changed his life forever. The talented star George Maharas was born in Astoria, Queens. He had a lot of siblings as he was the third child out of seven in his family. Unfortunately, his parents were not financially equipped to take care of him and his siblings. They were struggling initially to make ends meet. He did not exactly grow up in a wealthy home, but his parents had always tried to do their best to take care of him and his other five siblings. They had migrated from Greece in search of a better life for their family and they worked hard for it. Growing up, George was a fairly good kid. He did as his parents asked and never got into any sort of serious trouble. So when it was time to start high school, his parents were assured that George would make them proud. He was enrolled in Flushing High School, where his classmates noticed his singing talent. But if he was being honest with himself, George did not really like school. Education did not appeal to him, but his immigrant parents would not watch him throw his life away. So they agreed on a compromise. Although he didn't finish school, George later joined the United States Marine Corps for 18 months. After that, he earned his high school diploma. Solid compromise, but Gurge still had a gaping hole in his heart. He had a passion for singing, and he would be better off pursuing that. So he decided to pursue a career in singing, but he quickly realized that pursuing a singing career was not exactly lucrative. Also, he was said to have undergone improper vocal lessons that damaged his vocal cords. When this happened, he knew for a fact that he could not pursue a singing career in the long run. He later picked up another interest in not just entertainment but acting, and he appeared in musicals outside of New York City. His first acting opportunity came on the TV show Mr. Peepers, where he played a funny version of Marlon Brando. Now the trajectory of his career had changed. He decided he was fascinated by acting, and so he studied at the actor's studio with Sanford Meisner and Lee Strasberg. His dream was simple, learn all he can and dominate Hollywood, if only it were that easy. Route 66, his big break. A few years after learning in acting school, George came out energetic and ready to take on Hollywood, but no one told him that nothing was handed to anyone on a platter of gold. So, like a lot of other aspirants, George Maharis had to start from scratch and work on several acting gigs here and there, but nothing solid enough to put his name on the map, but he kept at it and hoped that one day he would get his big break. Sure enough, in 1960, Maharis starred alongside Martin Milner in the TV series Route 66, which aired on CBS, and as one would expect, he played the role with all of his might, and people noticed. His performance was recognized with an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Series in 1962. He was the happiest man in the world when the praises and accolades started rolling in. His dream was coming through before his very eyes. Months later, Maharis had appeared in about 82 episodes when health issues began to come for him, including a serious case of hepatitis. The next line of action was clear. He had to leave the show. Everyone, both fans and studio producers alike, were sad to see him leave. But after he left, he dedicated his life to making a good recovery and perhaps coming back to work. Once again, fate smiled at him. In 1962, George was healthy enough to come back to work. He had made a full and fast recovery, and when asked how he did it, he claimed that abstaining from alcohol was what helped. But now, things were a little different at work. The work hours were brutal, and he just could not keep up. So again, George had to leave, as it was taking a toll on his health. In an interview, George was asked why he decided to leave again, and his answer was simple and short. He said, I have to protect my future. I keep going at the present pace. I'm a fool. But after working with them all this while, the Route 66 producers would not let George go just like that, and so they put up a fight, a rather aggressive fight, Maharis versus Route 66. 
When the producers found out that Jaroge was leaving, they resorted to starting a legal battle that he didn't see coming. Initially, Maharis didn't seek other employment, but once the producers replaced him for the next season, he began booking other engagements. He had been scheduled to appear on The Ed Sullivan Show in June 1963, but the Route 66 producers, claiming he was still under an exclusive contract, prevented his appearance through legal action. They accused him of faking illness to break his contract. One person even accused Maharis of prioritizing a film career over his loyalty to the company, his co-star, and the rest of the show's cast and crew. Maharis argued that times had changed and companies couldn't treat actors as mere commodities. He eventually won the legal battle, proving that his contract was invalid. Despite attempts at reconciliation from the Route 66 producers, Maharis made his first TV appearance after leaving the show on July 2, 1963. After his departure, the show's popularity declined and it was ultimately canceled in March 1964, the fate that the producers were trying to escape. But sadly, now it was too late. Even though George had won the case, after a while he figured the acting industry was a bit too toxic for him and then he remembered he had other interesting talents as well. In that pivotal moment, his spirit ignited and he found himself on a profound journey of self-discovery that revealed a gift that had laid dormant within him for years, the exploration phase. It was almost as though Maharis just remembered he could sing. This single realization was the beginning of a memorable music career. Instantly, he decided to take a break from the acting scene and plunge into singing with as much excellence as he could, and the results were simply astonishing. Early in his career, Maharis released albums and singles through Epic Records. His first album, titled George Maharis Sings, had a notable presence on Billboard's album chart in 1962, staying for 29 weeks and reaching number 10. It ended up being the 41st most popular album of the year. One of his singles, Teach Me Tonight achieved moderate success. It spent 11 weeks on the Billboard charts in 1962, reaching number 25 on the Hot 100 and number 8 on the Easy Listening chart. Another single, Love Me As I Love You, reached number 17 on the Easy Listening chart in September 1962. In 1963, Maharis made his singing debut on television, appearing on The Judy Garland Show. He performed the song Side by Side alongside Judy Garland. But all of these successes were not enough for him. He was on a roll now, and so, later on, he decided to expand his career into something a bit different. Maharis began performing in nightclubs and pursuing a newfound passion for painting. As of 2008, he continued to paint, dividing his time between New York City and Beverly Hills, California. But just like many Hollywood stars, Maharis found himself bearing the brunt of his scandalous life more legal issues. Unfortunately, even though George had lived a life free of drama and scandals, this feat would later be supplanted. Now, George began to live life on the edge and on the fast lane. Sadly, it got him inevitably in trouble. In 1967, George was arrested on charges of lewd conduct, but that was not all, because in 1974 he was arrested on charges of perversion for using the men's bathroom as a place of inappropriate behavior and intercourse. However, those charges were eventually dismissed, but in 1967 and 1975 he was back in cuffs again for trespassing and disturbing the peace. Thankfully, they were misdemeanor offenses, and so he pled guilty. One would only wonder where all these behaviors came from. But after 1975, George stayed away from trouble and lived a fairly normal and quiet life, but sadly, no one can run from the jaws of inevitability, the sad demise. By now, George Maharis had lived a good life. He had left a mark and retired to his home in Beverly Hills. But even at that, no one was fully prepared for what came next. It was May 24, 2023, when Maharis finally passed at the age of 94. On one hand, he was mourned by those who loved and cherished him, but on the other, it called for a celebration of a life well lived. Despite his good life, George Maharis had his fair share of scandals, but click this video to find out the scandal in Hollywood that was so big, it eventually changed the industry.